Hi everyone, it's Diane with So Boutique and today is Fabric Friday. I'm really excited today to be in our kitchen. I'm sitting at our kitchen table, which you can only see a piece of, um, but I'm gonna take you through a process that I went through over the last couple of weeks to really add a little bit of color and life to the kitchen. And I love how it turned out. I'm not so great at table decorating, you know, with stuff, but I really like the look of the tablecloth. I like the look of our placemats that I made. I made a matching apron. I have napkins. And I also have a set of oven mitts, traditional oven mitts that I wanna share with you today. The first thing I wanna start with is my silly goal. <laughs> I'm one of these people that has to use every little bit of fabric when I start a project. Um, I really like to use every remnant, every leftover cut, every everything. So you're gonna see me go through this process, but let's start with the tablecloth. The tablecloth itself is smaller than the table. What I decided to do was to cover only the center piece of the table. I didn't want it to be a full tablecloth, but yet I didn't want it to be a simple table runner. So the tablecloth itself measures 60 inches square. So what I did is from my two yards of 115 inch wide fabric, I simply tore, I really did, I measured and I tore a square that was 60 inches, basically 61 inches wide and long. I finished the edges by hemming a half an inch and then another half an inch, pressing the fabric and then simply using a decorative stitch on my sewing machine, I finished the edges. That is all I did to complete this tablecloth. It's a beautiful, beautiful base that I really love the look of. So as of now, I have only used 60 by 60 of my 115 inch wide fabric, but I really, really love the look. Project number two is a set of oven mitts. I love how these oven mitts turned out. I have to honestly tell you, um, it might seem silly, but these oven mitts measure six inches across and they're about 13 inches long. The exterior fabric is the fabric that I used for the tablecloth, obviously. And the internal fabric was a fabric I had upstairs that I had pre-washed and it's our Phoenix Sand Surf. It's kind of a tan. I don't know if you can see inside here, but it's like a goldy tan fabric. And I used our strips of our um, gradation, the hyacinth violet, as my binding and the loop. Inside the oven mitt is a layer of fusible batting and a layer of the insulated batting that you definitely have to have when you're making an oven mitt or a trivet or something that you need that heat resistance. And so I did make these really thick and my sewing machine wasn't thanking me for it, but um, in certain spots when I was stitching this around, but it really did get very thick. So, um, but it's perfect for what I want to use for an oven mitt. I will have projects, uh, project kits on our website for the oven mitts as well, but I wanna take you through the process. So I created my own little oven mitt template by tracing my hand and adding two inches all the way around. And then I just gave it this cute little curve and lengthened it so that it was a longer oven mitt to help me when I put in and take out 
anything from the oven. I just really wanted it to be longer. You don't need to have it this long. You can have a shorter oven mitt, it's not a problem. But what I simply did is I cut four pieces of external fabric, lining fabric, the fusible batting and the insulated batting. Each one of those measures 10 by 15. I drew my um, lines on the external fabric and quilted this. And so I just used a variegated cotton thread as my quilting thread. And um, I just love how it looks because it just, the variegation in the thread and everything just matched beautifully. Um, so I quilted it, I traced the tracing of my oven mitt. Before I cut out that tracing, I stitched very close to that line on the inside of the line so that the quilted fabric would stay in place. Then I cut out my oven mitt with right sides together, stitched all the way around and trimmed it and clipped it. So we want to make sure that you're clipping in the curve areas here um, and also around the outside so that the seam will actually move and actually create its shape properly. You do need to clip it. Even though you're clipping through a lot, you still need to clip it. And then I used just a traditional binding. So I cut strips that were two inches. And I think they were each one took something like two inches by 16 inches and created a folded binding. So I folded my fabric in half, I folded it in half again, and then I opened it back up, stitched it to the inside, okay, all the way around, and then I uh, matched my binding and cut it off. So I have a complete binding all the way around. Then you turn it inside or right side out. You have to turn it afterwards, and then top stitch your binding, and I slipped a loop in there while I was top stitching my binding down so that it would just secure it in place. Here's the trick. <laughs> Here's my lesson learned. There's always a lesson learned. Here's my lesson learned. Do you see this right here, this thumb? And this thumb right here, they're too small. <laughs> not too small for my thumb in any way. It's not, it's not the, the fit after it's made. It is very difficult to turn all those layers of quilted fabric in such a small space, okay? This is great fun. This is easy to do, the bigger piece here. So what I would probably recommend, and I think the pattern that I include and the template that I include in my pattern will have a different shape. It doesn't need to have so much of a dip here. This shape here is just simply too hard to turn. It took me a while to get it to turn. Um, so we're gonna improve that just a little bit, but if you decide to make this by yourself and just wanna kind of create your own oven mitt, just know that that little piece, turning it inside out, is very difficult. Um, you can do it, persistence, uh, but it is difficult indeed. And um, make sure that you clip along the inside here and the outside there, and it just takes its shape beautifully. These are easy to wash, everything will be great with these. So that is my project number two. But before I move on to project number three, I forgot to share with you, if you don't want to make a traditional oven mitt, we also have project kits for what, what we call a double oven mitt. These, and this is what I was using all fall. Look at my double oven mitts. I have two sizes. These are simply a wraparound oven mitt that has no finger shape. It has nothing like that, but it is used to simply go into your oven and grab whatever casserole bowl or pan or whatever you happen to have. This is a smaller one to use for smaller um, pans and bowls. Here is a longer one. And you can make these any length that you want. 
Um, I like the longer one because it goes all the way around a cookie sheet, okay? So these are also on our website and they're probably easier to make simply because you don't have to turn anything and you don't have to worry about your hand measurements. Um, but it, it's an option. So double oven mitts or a traditional oven mitt, whichever is your favorite. So I wanted to make sure that I shared this with you as well. Our third project is a set of placemats. You may not always want to have a tablecloth on your table or, for example, I was showing you this tablecloth. There are two chairs here that don't have anything on them. And so this would be great to have at the end where there's no tablecloth if somebody is sitting there. And so what I did is I have a book that I wanna share with you that had the pattern, simple pattern for the placemats as well as for the apron that I'm gonna share with you next. But I wanna show you this book. This is the School of Sewing book and um, it has so many projects in it. It is a how to sew, learning how to sew in a very modern way. So if you are a beginning sewer, if you are teaching somebody how to sew and really want a good reference guide for notions, for how to use your sewing machine, selecting fabric, working with different types of fabric, and then taking you through simple projects that can help you with your skills, whether they be placemats, an oven, uh, um, an apron, a tote bag, a quilt, uh, so many different projects that are in this book. And I found this book to be amazingly well written. I shouldn't say amazingly, but very well written. And it took, you know, the premise of the book is that this group of, of friends taught themselves how to sew and this is their experiences and tips as well as a guide all in the same book. And I just, it's really a great book. So the placemats are in this book and um, I should have marked the page. Okay, so it's a set of table placemats. The yardage in here is for four placemats. And what I did last night, actually I finished this one last night, is I cut out and made two placemats. Um, because I didn't really envision needing four at my table, but I do have enough leftover fabric to make two more. So I cut out, using this pattern, I cut out a, a front piece and a back, and I used the same fabric because I had so much of this 115 inch wide fabric. I used the same as the front and the back. And it is, I think it's like 16 by 23 or whatever it happens to be. But I used, again, my fusible batting in the middle because I didn't want it to be thick. I wanted it to be structured enough. And then I just used different quilting techniques. This one has, um, I just made like, I don't know if you can see this even, but I just simply stitched different four corners this one here, I just stitched all the way across um, in various line widths so that it gave it a little bit of texture. I didn't want anything overly dramatic. I just wanted something that matched the table. And then again, I bound this with the Hyacinth Violet Nuance Gradations to give it that really, really fun look. Um, it changes color as our gradations do from um, one color to the next, and it just, I don't know, I think it really brightened up the, the placemats. So there's enough fabric within this uh, two yards of 115 inch by fabric to make four of these placemats with the fabric on both sides, just to keep it really simple. If you want to add another color to the mix, then you can put something else on the back or on the front, and turn it over and give a whole nother look to your table as well. So that is project number three.
Project number four is the apron. And this used only about 26 inches by 28 inches of this 115 inch wide fabric. So we're getting there, we're using more and more. Um, but I used that as the base fabric and then I used our nuance gradations in the shade of hyacinth violet as my pocket and the ties. And the hyacinth violet, this is 45 inch wide. This is what it looks like before it's been cut up. So it has about three different color changes in it. And um, it just, it accents this fabric so beautifully. And that's why I used it for all of these projects. This particular apron is also from this book. And I believe it's project number three. Here's the image from the book, just a cute apron. And you can do so many fun things with the fabric and the pocket and the ties. So if you wanted to have, like they use stripes here, this was just beautiful. Um, but if you wanted to do something where this was hand dyed and this is a motif to it, you just, whatever colors work for your kitchen and your style, um, you can use for this apron. So what I did is I used, again, I used the base fabric that I'm working with for all of my projects here for this kitchen little ensemble. And that became the main portion of the apron. I used the hyacinth violet gradation as the pocket and the ties. And that's basically it. The step-by-step -step in the book is so easy to follow. And basically the design of this apron is you start with a almost a square piece of fabric. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit of a rectangle, but not very much by two inches. And you're cutting off your angles, okay? And each one of these angles is a casing. So we have a casing here and we have a casing over here. The tie that you create is a very long tie and it is pushed through the casing, around the neck, back through the other casing, and then you tie it in the back. That's how simple this apron is. So it's adjustable to any person's size, whatever it happens to be. So if you're making this for yourself, for a, a gentleman, for a child, you just have to adjust the measurements of where you start and use the same techniques to make this apron. The pockets in the front of this apron, what I wanted to do with the hyacinth violet gradation was to simply center this purple shade on the center of the apron. So I did get a little bit of the, of the deep uh, hyacinth shade over here, and then I got a little bit of the pinky shade over here. Now, what I did, so I'm gonna show you how I did that. You can use any portion of the colorway or whatever fabric you're using, but I was going to simply fold my fabric in half, but the color changes don't match up equally across each portion. So I took and positioned, I wanted the purple in the middle to be my center. So I simply measured the purple, folded it in half so that I could see where the color change was into the blue and the pink. And that's where I started my measurement to fit the center of my apron. That's all I did. And um, it turned out beautiful. So it's just simple, simple stitching. There's three pockets in the front. You can make those as large or as small as you want. That's your choice. The one thing I will say is the pockets are very deep. So for example, here's, here's a kitchen whisk, okay? it really falls all the way in. <laughs> and so if you want something that's not quite as deep, take a stitch line, leave the length of the, of the um, pocket, because I think it's really a great length, but just stitch another line a little higher and it won't be as deep. So if you were creating this apron for a child, 
Um, it's just too deep. They, they'll just go, ooh, unless you're going to put a lot of stuff in these pockets for crafting or, or for baking or whatever it happens to be. But you can make them narrower by simply creating another stitch line across the top of your pockets. So that is project number four. Well, I haven't decided on project number five, so I guess we're going to stop at four. I have fabric left, and let's see how much fabric I do have left. I still have, oh my goodness gracious, I think I have enough for, so this is what I have left out of my two yards of 115 inch wide fabric. So I could make, like I said, I could make two more placemats. Um, the one thing that I really would like to make actually is trivets because I have ceramic trivets, I have wood trivets, I have things like that. So I could use more of the insulated batting and make some trivets as well. They could be round, they can be whatever shape. So that's an idea. Or I could make matching napkins, but I think I'm going to go back and finish my placemats so that I have four placemats. I think that's what I'll do. So from this uh, two yards, which is 72 inches of 115 inch wide fabric, I was able to put together what I think is like a really fun kitchen look. And so we have our tablecloth. We have eventually we'll have our floor pl four placemats. We have a really fun and simple and beautiful apron. We have two oven mitts and um, we're ready to set the table, basically. <laughs> um, now, I wanna talk to you about one other thing and that is napkins. I, I love the look of cloth napkins and I think it just adds that extra touch to a table. And for, I found I would say it was Valentine's Day or Valentine's planning last year, 2022, when I created these and sewed up these napkins because I had, I'll put it on the, the monitor here, um, the Valentine table runner, and I wanted napkins to match it. And so these napkins that I have on the table now are all made from our gradation fabric. So they have bold, brilliant color to them. And I simply used my serger and did a three thread roll hem to finish off the edges. If you don't have a serger, um, no worries. Simply hem your um, napkins like you did or would the tablecloth itself. So just simply folding the edges in and top stitching and creating a miter corner at the edge. I did one of those as well to show the difference and I used variegated thread on that. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but here is the point. So I did the top stitching here and then here's what it looks like inside with your miter corner. Okay, I think I need to press this. But, um, so there's easy ways to finish off your napkins with a serger or without a serger. And so I just, I pulled these napkins back out and um, they match this tablecloth beautifully. They bring in the, the reds, the purples, um, the violets. And then I thought, you know, there's a lot of blue or turquoise in this table as well. Uh, tablecloth as well. And so the other shade that would look really, really fun, let me hold this up a little bit, would be the turquoise uh, gradation that we have. So there's so many different shades that work with each one of our fabrics. And that is um, kind of a plan of ours, is to always make sure that we have fabric that work together and that you can use interchangeably to create a look that you absolutely love. So I hope you enjoyed our Fabric Friday and kind of a trip down our kitchen decor. <laughs> so if you come visiting, you'll know what you're gonna see in the kitchen of our 
of our home. So we hope you have an absolutely wonderful Friday. Sew up, think about, you know, sew up something new for your kitchen or dining room or whatever it happens to be. It can be as simple as placemats. It can be as simple as a decorative finished, not quilted uh, tablecloth and um, add a little life to your kitchen and inside setting.